location today on the south side in the newly renovated South Ridge. The city of Des Moines and Mace Ridge retail developers have been working to revitalize South Ridge and build upon this area's strong retail history. The vision is to bring new retail investment and provide unique recreational, educational, and cultural features that will attract a large customer base and bring more activity. My first guest today is Scott McMurray, who is the developer for Southridge. Thank you so much for joining us today and letting us come into Southridge. Thanks for having me. Well, my first question, of course, Scott, is what's the overall plan for Southridge? And later I want to ask you about the different phases. We are in phase one, which was to take some of the enclosed space um, and, and shrink it. It was a big mall built in the 70s when uh, malls had really huge middles and lots of anchors. Uh, today the trend is towards um, a more mixed use development mm -hmm. and so we needed to uh, get some exterior entrances. We tore down about 300,000 square feet of interior space and have built back about 100,000 square feet uh, that will open onto a courtyard. And we're reaching, uh, well, we're at the completion now of phase one, is that right? We're rapidly approaching <laughs> it. Okay. Um, can you give us just a little preview? We're going to show you, of course, phase one. Everybody will be here shopping in the holiday season. But just give us a little preview of phase two. What's coming after this? Um, we consider phase two to be Des Moines Area Community College. Uh, they um, are uh, scheduling, I think, their own press event in the near future. Uh, but they will be taking over the old J.C. Penney's building and doing a DMAC campus at the mall. Um, I don't want to get into too much detail. I don't want to <laughs> okay. steal their thunder. But we consider that phase two because they're going to put a lot of bodies on site every day, uh, and it's going to really add to the to the to the offerings here at the mall. Okay, and I don't know how, how much viewers can see, but right behind us is the area uh, that's been renovated. That's going to be that new DMAC Career Center, correct? Correct. All right. Well, we'll look forward to that. Tell us a little bit about the retail developer Mace Rich. Mace Rich is a national retail developer. They're a public company. Uh, they have. 75 million square feet of mall space across the country. Wow. Most of it in the best markets in the country. Mm -hmm. They're known to be best in class, best, best in market. Um, huge presence in, on the East Coast, uh, bigger presence on the West Coast. Uh, but they're a nationwide major player in the mall business. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. that, that's great for us. Tell us a little bit about what the shoppers will see. What is going to be visually different when they see the new features here at Southridge? Um, in phase one, it's, it's a completely different shopping experience. Before you'd come to the mall, unzip your coat, walk up and down the hallways mm -hmm. and, and see the tenants. This is more of a, of a lifestyle feel. It's, mm -hmm. There's parking at the front doors. Mm -hmm. The tenants have uh, entrances to the exterior parking lot. Uh, there's a beautiful courtyard uh, that will be a gathering space, and in fact, our grand opening will be held out there. Th it, there's, there's landscaping. There, it's, it's just a completely different feel from what the enclosed mall was. Um, will there be some of the um, traditional things that we look for, the food court? Uh, there, there will possibly be some food uses in phase one, but those will be coming later. Uh, you'll see the traditional anchors, Sears, Yonkers, Target. Mm -hmm. um, you'll see some uh, power center retailers okay. uh, that haven't been here in the past. Uh, you'll see some strip and service center retail. But the typical food court uh, it, it will not be existent at this point. Well, we are beginning the holiday shopping season and I understand that Southridge has some activities planned to help us all get into the holiday spirit. Why don't you tell us about that, Scott? Well, first of all, the first tenants in phase one will be opening November 1st. And so there are some grand opening ceremonies planned on November 10th. Okay. Uh, they'll run 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, they include uh, numerous food vendors, there's children's activities, there's a fashion show, wow. and uh, it's all capped off with a performance by Jason Brown. He's a country music star. 
uh, a Des Moines native. He, he lives in Nashville, singer-songwriter. Yeah. Uh, so we're really looking forward to that. Wow, now that is the way you do a grand opening. Fantastic. Um, is Santa going to return for the holiday season? There will be a tree lighting ceremony and okay. Santa will be here and the details on that will follow. Okay, well that's one of the traditions I certainly look forward to. I understand that after the holiday season that Southridge still has some plans for other events and activities that will carry them throughout the year. Any uh, scoop you want to give us on that? Uh, um I can announce two of the tenants who will be opening after the holidays. One of them may still make it, but Shoe Carnival will be opening in the spring. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have a major tenant who's opening in, in phase one, who's the largest tenant for phase one, but I'm not allowed to announce oh, it. Oh, come on. <laughs> but I think uh, everybody will know who it is before they get here. Okay, that sounds great. Uh, the mall has added some very unique features. You've told us a little bit about the Education Center. Um, what exactly is DMAC going to offer? Are we talking about the regular coursework that DMAC offers? Or are we talking about something particular to the career? Or, or can you tell us? Um, again, I, they, ha they have a press event scheduled where they're going to give full details. But okay. I can tell you that they're going to serve high school students. Oh. They're going to serve uh, um, adults. They have all kinds of programming for, uh, it, it's a career academy, it's a success center, it's English as a second language. Um, there will be approximately 3,000 student visits a week at this location, so they'll offer all kinds of things, and I'm sure at their press event they'll give full details. Okay. Well, now you have promised us a little tour of the area. So we want to, to kind of leave our little nice stage here, which I'm, I'm really beginning to like. And you're going to give us a sneak behind some of those walls about what's going on. Is that right? I'd be happy to. All right. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Okay, we're standing here in what's going to be the center courtyard for the phase one of the new development. Um, this circular area will have a uh, very unique piece of artwork installed. This is where the concert will be uh, for the grand opening ceremonies on November 10th. Okay, what, what you see, the parking lot we're standing right now was inside the mall. This was the food court, this was where the carousel was, and it's now uh, storefront parking. Uh, customers can pull right up to the front doors of the stores they want to shop in, but there's still connectivity to the interior mall to the west and to all the anchors off of this same parking lot. What you see behind me is the new architecture. It's different than what the old Southridge looked like. It's different than just about anything you see in this part of town. Um, very updated, very cool, very uh, unique with uh, the clear story windows that will be lit at night as a beacon above. This is Kay Jeweler on the corner. This area behind me is what will be opening first on November 1st this year. Everything we need will be here. Yeah, and, and, and just the experience, the 20 foot wide sidewalks with uh, landscape lighting and benches and planters and uh, it's going to be very well landscaped and have a completely different feel than anything over on this side of town. Right? I have the privilege and the responsibility of directing a Shakespeare troupe. It can be challenging, but it's always compelling, and it's always a learning experience. I learn a lot from what Shakespeare has written, and I learn a lot about what people bring to Shakespeare. Shakespeare is a treasure chest in terms of all the characters that he contains. You look at all those people inside that treasure chest, and you learn a lot about life. My name is Lorenzo, and I geek Shakespeare. Visit Des Moines, we have it all. 
With Des Moines' new smart card parking meters, there is no need to carry around a pocket full of change. There are over a thousand parking meters that now accept the new smart cards. Use your smart card at downtown meters. Insert the card and buy time on the meter. Come back, insert the card again, and the remaining value is refunded back to your card. You can purchase smart cards at any one of the three vending machines, which are located at City Hall, the 3rd and Court Parking Garage, and the 9th and Locust Parking Garage. Get yours today and leave your change at home. Welcome back. My next guest is the city's new assistant city manager, Matt Anderson, who is also the director for the city's Office of Economic Development. Matt, welcome to City Talk. Thank you. And Mary. welcome back to government. Thank you. I'm glad to be back. Just in case people don't know, let's tell them just a little bit. You were in the private sector and you returned. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, I, after spending uh, nine or ten years with the city's economic development office, I had a wonderful opportunity to go back into commercial real estate, which is kind of where my career had started. And um, after a, you know, a 18 months or so doing that, which I, I had a, a wonderful opportunity and a great time, I was really feeling that I was missing my passion, which is the city of Des Moines. Okay, that's great. Tell us a little bit about your area of your responsibility. What are you responsible for in the city manager's office? Well, similar to when I was here uh, prior to leaving, I directly oversee the city's economic development office. And I also have uh, direct reports in other departments now, which gives me a broader view of city government. So um, the Parks and Recreation Director, the Housing Services Director, and the Public Information Office now report directly to me. Oh, you've got fantastic Oh, job. I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I know you're still new in the position, well, kind of new in that you've come back. But do you have any goals or objectives that uh, you want to achieve or perhaps projects you uh, have your sights on? Um, I do. Well, number one is trying to get myself familiar with those other three departments that I don't have a strong working knowledge of. Mm -hmm. um, our uh, long-standing Parks and Recreation Director, Don Tripp, left recently, so will be uh, one of the first tasks that I'll be part of is uh, finding a new Park and Recreation Director, so I'm excited about that. And um, in economic development, there's a lot of good projects keyed up. I think we've got a lot of strong neighborhoods and, and neighborhood projects in addition to downtown work. Uh, in, my, in my previous tenure with the city, we had a large boom in corporate development downtown. Mm -hmm. That slowed down a little bit with the recession, but um, our corporations downtown are still strong. We're not looking at a lot of expansions in that arena, but there's a lot of interesting public-private partnership projects uh, teeing up for downtown that are going to keep us busy for a few years. Things such as the, down, the Riverfront YMCA looking to expand and possibly relocate um, a, uh, there's been a lot of talk about attracting a new event center hotel, so we'll be working jointly with the county and the business community to see if we can uh, move those plans forward. Um, uh, county courthouse, the county is, uh, is running out of space in their existing courthouse, looking to expand, so working with them on options. Just a, you know, a, a myriad of, of projects and a couple of parking ramps downtown that uh, at some point in the next five to ten years are nearing the end of their useful life. And what do we do with those sites and those projects? So there's a lot of exciting things to keep me busy. Can we ask about the Des Moines building? You can ask about the Des Moines building. The City Council on Monday night approved a piece of federal funding for the Des Moines building um, that will get that historic rehab um, underway. It's a, it's a wonderful project, over 130 residential units in, in downtown, uh, apartment units downtown, and the, the rehab of just a gorgeous Art Deco building that's kind of gone unnoticed as, uh, as it hasn't had many tenants in it in recent years, so it'll be great to have that iconic property uh, back in the market. Fantastic. They have some great things ahead for us. Well, we are in Southridge, as you know. So what, is, what role, if any, did the city of Des Moines play in the redevelopment of this uh, retail center? This was a great partnership with Mace Rich, the owner of the mall. Um, we have been working with them for, for many years, in fact, on coming up with ways to reinvent this mall. Um, the mall, um, the regional malls have changed. If you look at a, a brand new retail mall, uh, regional mall, the physically have changed. They, a lot of stores have their own exterior entrance. 
Um, mm -hmm. You just have a different, um, a different physical layout and different feel to malls. Mm -hmm. Whereas you get to some of the older generation of malls that were built in the in the 70s, um, they're they've become kind of physically obsolete in the market. They don't really work in today's real estate market. So what um, what Mace Rich is doing is reinventing the mall, making it current uh, in in this current real estate environment. And the role that the city played was the creation of a, of a tax increment finance district to assist the mall. So there's a, a, um, a serious financial commitment and backing from the city. The good news is it's all new tax generation that's generated by the mall itself. There's no general funds coming into this, no, no large upfront monies coming into this project. If the mall is successful and raises their, um, their assessed value to uh, a certain level, they will get uh, a portion of their property taxes um, granted back to them um, to help offset the costs that they've deferred, that they, uh, they've incurred. The, um, you know, an interesting thing about this mall is the mall has lost tenants and has become obsolete. Um, the assessed value of the mall, the building itself, not the land, but the building, has dropped to $100. The assessor really sees no economic value in this mall anymore, um, hence the need to, re to reinvent it. So, that's a, that decrease in the assessed value has meant a lot of lost property taxes for the city of Des Moines. And so our goal is to get that tax assessment back up yeah. and then the, the uh, income generation back to the city of and Des Moines. And that, that sort of leads to our next question in helping residents and viewers understand why this retail center or any retail center is important to city government. You know, it, it, the tax generation is, is important just in itself, in itself alone because um, it's those taxes that fund police and fund fire and, and not just at city government level, but also those property taxes are funding the school system. So uh, when, when, uh, when a property gets depressed and, and becomes obsolete in a market, it impacts directly the funding to the city. There's also a large catalytic impact. When a, a mall is an anchor and it's an anchor to a neighborhood and as a mall starts to deteriorate, so does the surrounding area. You, you don't get enough, you don't get as much redevelopment and, and interest in, you know, from residential and commercial areas that want to be near the mall because there's just not enough traffic being generated by it. Mm -hmm. So by the mall reinventing itself, it'll drive more traffic here. It'll hopefully help. This southeast area of Des Moines is where we expect to see most of our residential growth. People mm -hmm. want to live next to a strong uh, uh, shopping district and we think that that's going to um, also spill over and be a catalytic driver to residential development in the area. Okay, so you've already sort of answered my next question because what, what goal would the city of Des Moines set for gains in retail in this area? And I guess it is directly to, tied to how much did we annex just, just south of the mall? South of the mall, yeah, yeah I mean the, the land, if you look at a map of Des Moines, we are, we are really hemmed in on where we can grow. We can't go to the west. There's not a lot of opportunity to grow to the north. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be in the southeast. So this is a very important area as we grow our population base. And the growth opportunities are in this, in this quadrant of town. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's important that, um, that we provide the amenities that residents are going to look for here. Yes. And this, we, we don't want people getting in their car and, and driving to the suburbs to do their shopping. We think it's important that they have the amenity here close to home. They can, they can run a quick errand on their, on their way home from work. And, and it, it's, it's the anchor that people look for and the strength and gives them confidence if they're going to make a, a home purchase in the yeah. area. And that, that is so true. I mean, this area has so much potential and it is where Des Moines' future is. Um, so as you just alluded to, it's important to shop local in Des Moines. Um, tell us what impact does that have maybe on me as a resident, on my neighbors, uh, on our community in general when we all decide to shop local? You know, for myself, it's, it's uh, well, number one, it's convenience. If I don't have to get in the car and make a 20 or 30 minute trip somewhere else and I have that, those amenities and those services nearby, I'm always going to pick uh, a nearby service. Um, I live near Merle Hay Mall. I'll, I'll make trips to Merle Hay when, when I can. And then I also have a nice, in my neighborhood, a nice strong um, neighborhood retail center. This is a regional uh, center where mm -hmm. you would think that uh, you would you would hope to attract people from Carlisle and Indianola and surrounding communities in a regional center like Southridge. But the neighborhood shopping is also important. Those those strong neighborhood districts that it tend, generally tend to have more locally owned uh, shops, such as the Ingersoll Corridor or Beaverdale, um, where you have some less less franchises, more locally owned. 
and we want to support those. They pay property taxes. They have, they're a strong employment base, and generally those people who work in, say, the Ingersoll corridor are a lot more likely to live in the city of Des Moines, so you want to see them succeed. Okay. Well, Matt, that, that is so important, and I'm glad that we have this center, and I'm glad that it's, it's making the transition that it, it's making. Um, as we wrap up, is there anything that you would like to share with our viewers about your new role and what you see coming up next uh, in economic development for the city? Um, I'm excited to be back. I'm passionate about the city of Des Moines and moving the city of Des Moines forward. One of my goals is, as economic, as economic development is, is, a, is a priority for me and where I spend a lot of my time in, in my week, um, is tying together economic development and other city services, other city departments. Uh, there's a really strong tie between economic development and parks. And, and now that I'm involved with the parks department, I want to strengthen that tie. So as you can strengthen neighborhoods, strengthen the services that the city delivers, whether it be parks, police, fire, community development, um, I, I want to leverage those strengths that we have and use those to drive economic development. You hear that a lot, that um, those quality of life opportunities that a city can offer um, are, play a big role in corporate decision makers' decisions to locate in one city or another. And um, you need you need those quality of life and services that will help set us apart as we're competing for jobs. And we certainly are um, improving that every day. We are. Everything that you see in Des Moines is just, is, it's new, it's redeveloped, and it's beautiful. So, so you've got us on the right track. I hope so. Well, thank you very much for taking time to visit with us at City Talk, especially coming out to meet us here at Southridge. Thank you. But it's a great location, so we know you enjoyed the trip. I'm, I'm looking forward to it being open for the Christmas shopping season. Oh, yes. I, I, they've got some really exciting news, and I've been sworn to secrecy. <laughs> I'm holding on to it, but you want to stay tuned, and you want to keep an eye on Southridge when they open uh, the new mall with all of the new facilities in uh, November. And this is our November show, so stay tuned. Well, that wraps up this edition of City Talk. I hope you will join us again here on DMTV. Every month we will visit with a different city department and bring you new information about the services and facilities of city government. Today's program can be seen again during the dates and times now listed on your television screen. You can also watch DMTV online. Just go to www.dmgov.org and click on Watch Live. You'll also find us on YouTube, so go to the web and for, look for the public information page for the City of Des Moines, www.youtube.com backslash City of Des Moines, Iowa. Watch anytime any of our shows that you want with video on demand. Those links are also available on the public information page. DMTV is provided to the City of Des Moines by Mediacom Cable, and we broadcast 24 hours a day, seven days a week. On the Mediacom Cable Channel system, you can see us on Channel 7, on Channel 86, and on Channel 97.1, depending on the type of service you have with the cable company and the type of television set you own, whether it's a flat screen or a Fox model TV. For more information, visit the city's website at www.dmgov.org. I'm Amelia Hamilton Morris. Thank you for watching.